Through the Looking Glass, Part 1, Chapter 10. What's a s'more? The time flew by as Wade sat with Shadow. When it became lunchtime, Wade drove them back over to the station. He had just cut ordered pizza for the station. A sheriff should always want to boost team morale. He asked her to save a couple of slices for him and his friend's kid. It was peaceful riding with Shadow. The kid was quiet, but it wasn't an awkward quiet that most people had when around Wade. The conversation they had still played in his head. He hasn't really opened up about his mom since she died. She was all he really had, and it hurt that he only got to spend 12 years with her before her illness caught up with her. Sure, he had Tom and they both definitely got closer after the deaths of their respected parents. But then there was Shadow. He hated that the kid went through so much and he didn't even know the full details yet. Losing someone was tough, but also having to escape a government facility for your own safety was something Wade couldn't really wrap his head around. But he knew one thing, he was going to be there for this kid no matter what. When Wade finally parked in the station parking lot, he told Shadow he'd be out soon and walked in. Hey, Sheriff. The pizza's on your desk. Acting, Sheriff. He spotted two slices sitting on a paper plate on his desk. I'm acting, Sheriff. Sheriff, same thing. You say that now, but wait till you meet Tom. You'll see the difference. Everyone does. If you want something to drink, there's ginger ale in the fridge. Wade walked over to the fridge and grabbed two off the shelf. Ginger ale wasn't his favorite drink, but maybe Shadow might like it. He stuffed some napkins into his pocket and headed for the door. Oh, wait, fold up. Yeah? Lieutenant Jackson was wondering if he could take your evening ship tonight. Why? He mixed up dates in his calendar and realized he actually needed tomorrow night off. Oh, okay. So I'll be taking his shift tomorrow? Yeah, if that's all right. That's fine with me. Well, actually, it was perfect. That meant he could spend the evening with Shadow and fully focus on the talk they were going to have tonight. Great, I'll tell him. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, you too, Jessica. Wade finally walked out of the station and stepped into the patrol car. Hope I wasn't too long. Wade chuckled as he handed Shadow of the plain drinks. He watched as the kid inspected the cans. What's this? It's ginger ale. It's a brand of soda. It's like a fizzy juice. Oh, okay. Wade turned the car back on. What does it taste like? Like ginger with a hint of sweetness. I don't think I ever had ginger before. Really? Yes, I wasn't really given foods like that. Or food in general. But took everything in Wade not to slam his brakes and look at Shadow in the eye. Even ignoring the statement itself, it didn't sit right with him how nonchalant Shadow was about it. Well, you can try it when we get home. We're going home? Wade inwardly smiled. Shadow called it home. Not Wade's house, but home. Their home. Yeah, it turns out I got the afternoon off. So after we eat, we can just chill out at home. Wade heard Shadow shift in his seat. He probably was looking out the window. Wade noticed that the kids seemed to like to do that. Once they reached the house, Wade took the pizza and drinks from Shadow and opened the door. Usually, they'd eat in the kitchen. But today, Wade felt like eating on the living room floor. The two sat down on the carpet and Wade watched as Shadow practically inhaled his slice of pizza. Oh wow, a slow town kid. He don't want to choke. He watched as Shadow chewed a bit slower, taking Wade's words to heart. Wade grabbed one of the cans of ginger ale, opened it, and took a sip. It may not have been his favorite soda, but it did pair well with the pizza. After a couple more sips, Wade noticed Shadow's eyes watching him. Everything all right, kid? A blush graced Shadow's cheeks. Wade guessed he wasn't supposed to notice the kid staring. Shadow turned away and grabbed the other can. He watched as the hedgehog tried to open it as Wade did, but struggled. Here, why don't you just hand it to me? Wade reached his hand out. Shadow handed it to Wade and patiently waited for him to hand it back. Once opened, Wade watched as Shadow hesitantly took a sip. Within seconds, Wade watched Shadow's face brighten and made him smile. You like it, kid? I love it. 
Wade liked how much more comfortable the kid was getting with telling him how he feels. Literally two days ago, he could barely get the kid to talk. The two ate and drank in relative silence. It was nice. But as time went on, Wade could feel the elephant in the room. He had to start up that conversation again. Sure, Shadow opened up a lot, but one of Wade said something wrong, and the kid closes up again. He didn't want that. You remind me of her. Wade looked up at Shadow. He had finished his food by now, but was staring at the ground. She was nice and kind at but... Shadow's breath hedged as he continued. Wade pulled the kid into his lap and held him. And she always saw the best of me, even though she shouldn't have. Wade didn't want to interrupt Shadow, so instead, he gently rubbed the top of the kid's head. I'm a monster. They may be to be a weapon, to be the ultimate life form, and I still couldn't protect her. I couldn't save her. I was useless. No, I am useless. It was now that Wade felt like he had to intervene. You tried to save her, though. A monster doesn't try to save people. A weapon doesn't try to save people. This person, she cared about you a lot. Don't you think it would hurt her? The way you talk about yourself? Call yourself useless when she thought everything but that? You are just a kid. A kid forced to survive things you should never have had to. Please don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. Wade hugged Shadow tighter. He could feel the kid's tears wetting his shirt. Thank you. Wade barely heard the whispered words. Just barely. Shadow found himself not wanting to leave Wade's grasp. For all his life he'd been told that he's nothing but a weapon. A tool just to be used. That was his only need in life. It was the reason he was created. But Maria and Wade didn't see that. They just saw him. An angry on the outside, sweet on the inside hedgehog who just wanted to rest. Shadow used the silence to ask Wade a question. What was your mom like? Wade shifted a little bit. Shadow thought he might have pushed too far by being so blunt with the question. She was the best. Shadow didn't have to look up to know that there was a smile on Wade's face. She was kind. So kind to everyone. Always there for people. She taught me so much about being a good person. And I honestly don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for her. She loved to cook. We used to make homemade pizzas all the time together. We could never agree on the toppings, though. She loved the nature and trees around her, so we used to go on hikes and sit by the lake. We would even go camping, just the two of us, relaxing. She also was the best at making s'mores. I was terrible at it. I always burnt the marshmallows. What's a s'more? Huh? <laughs> you never had a s'more? Shatter tried not to laugh. What part of him being a lab experiment did Wade not get? Nope. Is it good? Wade looked down and made eye contact with Shadow, and just as he thought, he had the stupidest smile on his face. Yes, they're super delicious. A s'more is basically roasted marshmallow and chocolate squished between two graham crackers. That sounds interesting. Shadow can really picture what a s'more looked like, or what it might taste like. But if Wade says it's good, then maybe he should try it. Maybe one day I'll take you on a camping trip. I could even invite Tom and his boys. Who's Tom? Shadow thinks the name sounds familiar, but I can't quite place it. Oh, Tom's my best friend. He's the sheriff here. Shadow scrunched up his face in confusion. I thought you were the sheriff's. <laughs> no, I'm just falling in for Tom while he's on a trip with his family. He's the real sheriff. Why are you the sheriff? I'm just not cut out for it. Plus, I don't mind being deputy. Less stress. Shadow didn't get why Wade thought he wasn't cut out for the job. He's been doing a great job this whole time. Won't Tom's kids be a little freaked out by me? And that's when Wade really laughed. If it wasn't for him currently holding Shadow, Shadow was sure the man would have doubled over in a fit of laughter. <laughs> now trust me, they won't. They're like you. Like me? Yeah, Sonic is a hedgehog, Tails is a fox, and Knuckles is an echidna. Well, that explains why Wade wasn't surprised when you realized that Shadow was a talking hedgehog. If we go camping, do we have to go with them? What, afraid you'll have to share my attention? Shadow knew Wade was just teasing, but he wasn't wrong. Maybe. Shadow pouted as Wade squeezed him. 
Oh, don't worry, kiddo. I'm totally down to just go camping with you. Shadow haphazardly pushed Wade away. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Shadow rolled his eyes. Yeah, Shadow could definitely get used to this. Over the course of the week, Shadow found himself officially nestled into Wade's home. Well, his home too now. Wade bought Shadow his own set of toothbrushes, toothpaste, new bedding, and even a weighted blanket just like his. They even got into a new routine. Shadow would ride around with Wade all morning until they have lunch, and Wade would drop him back off at home. Shadow still didn't feel comfortable interacting with the other Green Hills residents, but he hears a lot about them from Wade. It was Monday now and Shadow was waiting for Wade to come home. He always arrives at 5 o'clock p.m. on the dot. Shadow glanced out the window to see if he could see Wade pulling in. He didn't see his car, but that's nothing to worry about. There was probably traffic or something. Shadow was sure Wade was on his way right now. Shadow glanced at the clock again. 5.15 p.m. He began to pace. He looked again. 5.45 p.m. Okay, now he was worried. Wade would have called by now if he was staying a little late. Was something wrong? Was Wade in an accident? Did Gunn find him? What if Wade was being tortured right now and it was all Shadow's fault? He ran to the phone. Next to Wade was a sticky note where Wade wrote down all the numbers Shadow could use to contact him in case of an emergency. Shadow dialed work number and listened to the line ring. It felt like he was waiting forever until he heard someone pick up. Hey there, who is this? Shadow's breath hitched. He did recognize the voice. It sounded young, like someone his age. But one thing was sure, it was the most annoying voice he ever heard. Where's Wade? He's busy right now, but you can leave him a message. Shadow was both aggravated and anxious. Give the phone to Wade. What, what, what's with the aggression? Shadow was at his wit's end. Give the phone to Wade now. I already told you, bro. He's busy. Give him the phone or I'll... Lil, what? Are you trying to threaten me? The other voice laughed like this was some sort of joke. It's not a threat if I can go through with it. Don't test me. Hand Wade the phone. He heard the voice sigh and walk away from the phone. He said something, but it was muffled and Shadow couldn't really make out what he was saying.